Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books where we are <coughs> making our way through the Srimad Bhagavatam, reach the seventh uh, canto, Hari Bol Hari Sarva, Hare Krishna. Um, where we're, we are now, you know, s studying the character of Prahlad Maharaj. And not more than just studying the character, just by hearing about Prahlad Maharaj, we become purified ourselves and eligible for the higher levels of devotional service. You're back. Hare Krishna. Hare Oh yes, I, I know it's been busy, busy. Okay. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram by Srila Sanatan Goswami from the Sri Krishna Lila Stava. And it goes like this Sarva Shastra Dipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja. Sarva Lokai Kadrik Prida, O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvan Dodita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Marikabando mat sangin, mat guru man mahadana, man nisadaga mat bhagya, mat ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin, atini chuchita kada, anamun chukadachin mam, prem narit kandayospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Reading from the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam Chapter 5, Prahlad Maharaj, the saintly son of Hiranyakashipu, starting with text 9. <clears throat> Dear son Prahlad, all peace and good fortune unto you. Kindly do not speak lies, just reply with the truth. These boys you see are not like you for they do not speak in a deviant way. How have you learned these instructions? <clears throat> How has your intelligence been spoiled in this way? These are the teachers of Blood Maharaj trying to convert him back to materialism. Purport. Blood Maharaj was still a boy and therefore his teachers thought that if they pacified the little boy he would immediately speak the truth revealing the secret of how the Vaishnavas came there to teach him lessons in devotional service. It was surprising, of course, that in the same school the other boards of the Daitas were not polluted. Only Prahlad Maharaj 
was supposedly polluted by the instructions of the Vaishnavas. The main duty of the teachers was to inquire who those Vaishnavas were that came to teach Prahlad and spoil his intelligence. Text 10. O best of your family, has this pollution of your intelligence been brought about by you or by the enemies? We are all your teachers and are very eager to hear about this. Please tell us the truth. Purport. Prahlad Maharaj's teachers were astonished that a small boy could speak such exalted Vaishnava philosophy. Therefore they inquired about the Vaishnavas who stealthily taught it to him in order that these Vaishnavas might be arrested and killed in the presence of Prahlad's father, Hiranyakashipu. 11. Prahlad Maharaj replied, Let me offer my respectful obeisances <laughs> unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose external energy has <coughs> created the distinctions of my friend and my enemy by diluting the intelligence of men. Indeed, I am now actually experiencing this, and although I have previously heard of it from authoritative sources. Purport As stated in Bhagavad Gita 5.18, Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gavihastini Shuni Chaiva Shapakecha Panditak Samadar Shinaha The humble sage by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog-eater, outcast. Pandita, those who are actually learned, <clears throat> the equipoised, advanced devotees who have full knowledge of everything, do not see any living entity as an enemy or friend. Instead, with broader vision, they see that everyone is part of Krishna as confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jivera Sarupahaya Krishnera Nitya Das Every living entity, being part of the Supreme Lord, is meant to serve the Lord, just as every part of the body is meant to serve the whole body. As servants of the Supreme Lord, all living entities are one, but a Vaishnava, because of his natural humility, addresses every other living entity as Prabhu. A Vaishnava sees other servants to be so advanced that he has much to learn from them. Thus he accepts all other devotees of the Lord as Prabhus, masters. Although everyone is a servant of the Lord, one Vaishnava servant, because of humility, sees another servant as his master. Understanding of the master begins from understanding of the spiritual master. Yasya prasadad bhagavat prasado yasya prasadan nagati katopi It's our ritual. Hare Krishna. I gotta stay young somehow or other. <laughs> it's getting tougher by the year. <laughs> by the mercy of the spiritual master, one receives the benediction of Krishna. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any advancement. Sakshad Duritvena Samasta Shastrair Uktastata Bhavyata Evasad Bihi Kintu Praburya Priya Eva Tasya Vande Guru Sri Charanaravindam. The spiritual master is to be honored as much as the Supreme Lord because he is the most confidential servitor of the Lord. This is, this is acknowledged in all revealed scriptures and followed by all authorities. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of such a spiritual master who is a bona fide representative of Sri Hari. Krishna. The spiritual master, the servant of God, is engaged in the most confidential service of the Lord, namely delivering all the conditioned souls from the clutches of Maya. 
in which one thinks, this person is my enemy and this one is my friend. Actually, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the friend of all living entities and all living entities are eternal servants of the Supreme Lord. Oneness is possible through this understanding, not through artificially thinking that every one of us is God or equal to God. The true understanding is that God is the Supreme Master and that all of us are His servants, or all of us are servants of the Supreme Lord and are therefore on the same platform. This has already been taught to Prahlad Maharaj by his spiritual master, Narada. But Prahlad was nonetheless surprised by how a bewildered soul thinks one person is enemy and another his friend. As long as one adheres to the philosophy of, of duality, thinking one person a friend and another an enemy, he should be understood to be in the clutches of Maya. The Mayavadi philosopher who thinks that all living entities are God and are therefore one is also mistaken. No one is equal to God. The servant cannot be equal to the master. According to the Vaishnava philosophy, the master is one and the servants are also one. But the distinction between the master and servant must con continue even in the liberated stage. In the conditioned stage, we think that some living entities are our friends, whereas others are enemies, and thus we are in duality. In the liberated stage, however, the conception is that God is the master, and that all living entities, um, being servants of God, are one. Text 12. When the Supreme Personality of Godhead is pleased with the living entity because of his devotional service, one becomes a pundit and does not make distinctions between enemies, friends, and himself. Intelligently, he then thinks, every one of us is an eternal servant of God and therefore we are not different from one another. Purport. When Pallad Maharaj's teachers and demoniac father asked him how his intelligence had been polluted, Prahlad Maharaj said, as far as I'm concerned, my intelligence has not been polluted. <laughs> Rather, by the grace of my spiritual master, and by the grace of my Lord Krishna, I have now learned that no one is my enemy and no one is my friend. We are actually eternal <coughs> servants of Krishna, but under the influence of the external energy, we think that we are separately situated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead as friends and enemies of one another. The mistaken idea, this mistaken idea has now been corrected and therefore, unlike, unlike ordinary human beings, I no longer think that I am God and that others are my friends and enemies. Now I am rightly thinking that everyone is an eternal servant of God and that our duty is to serve the Supreme Master, for then we shall stand on the platform of oneness as servants. Demons think of everyone as a friend or enemy, but Vaishnavas say that since everyone is a servant of the Lord, everyone is on the same platform. Therefore a Vaishnava treats other living entities neither as friends nor as enemies, but instead tries to spread Krishna consciousness, teaching everyone that we are one, we are all one, as servants of the Supreme Lord, but are uselessly wasting our valuable lives by creating nations, communities, and other groups of friends and enemies. Everyone should come to the platform of Krishna consciousness and thus feel oneness as a servant of the Lord. Although there are 8,400,000 species of life, a Vaishnava feels this oneness the Ishupanishad advises, Ekatvam Anupashyata. A devotee should see <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be situated in everyone's heart and should also see every living entity as an eternal servant of the Lord. <clears throat> this vision is called Ekatvam, oneness. <clears throat> Although there is a relationship of master and servant, both ma master and servant 
are one because of their spiritual identity. This is also Ekatvam. Thus the conception of Ekatvam for the Vaishnava is different from that of the Mayavadi. Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad Maharaj <clears throat> how he had become antagonistic to his family. When a family member is killed by an enemy, all the members of the family would naturally be inimical to the murderer. But Hiranyakashipu saw that Prahlad had become friendly with the murderer. Therefore he asked, Who has created this kind of intelligence in you? You have developed this con have you developed this consciousness by yourself? Since you are a small boy, someone must have induced you to think this way. Prahlad Maharaj wanted to reply that an attitude favorable toward Vishnu can develop only when the Lord is favorable. Sa yadu nuvrata. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is the friend of everyone. Suridam sarvabhutanam gyatva mam shantim richjati. The Lord is never an enemy to any of the millions of living entities, but is always a friend to everyone. This is true understanding. If one thinks that the Lord is an enemy, his intelligence is pashubhuti, the intelligence of an animal. <clears throat> he falsely thinks, I am different from my enemy, and my enemy is different from me. The enemy has done this, and therefore my duty is to kill him. This misconception is described in this verse as beda gatasati. The actual fact is that everyone is the servant of the Lord, as confirmed in Chaitanya Charitamrita by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jivera Surupa Hoya Krishna Nitya Das. As servants of the Lord, we are one, and there can be no questions of enmity or friendship. If one actually understands that everyone is us, every one of us is a servant of the Lord, where is the question of enemy? Or friend. <clears throat> Everyone should be friendly for the service of the Lord. Everyone should praise another's service to the Lord and not be proud of his own service. This is the way of Vaishnava thinking, Vaikuntha thinking. There may be rivalries and apparent competition between servants in performing service, but in the Vaikuntha planets, the service of another servant is appreciated not condemned. This is, Vaikun, this is Vaikuntha competition. There is no question of enmity between servants. This is Vaikuntha competition. There is no question of enmity between servants. Everyone should be allowed to render service to the Lord to the best of his ability and everyone should appreciate the service of others. Such are the activities of Vaikuntha. Since everyone is a servant, everyone is on the same platform and is allowed to serve the Lord according to His ability. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 15.15 Sarvasya chaham ridisana vishto matak smirtir gyanham apohanam cha The Lord is situated in everyone's heart, giving dictation according to the attitude of the servant. However, the Lord gives different dictation to the non devotees and devotees. The non-devotees challenge the authority of the Supreme Lord and therefore the Lord dictates in such a way that the non-devotees forget the Lord's service, life after life, and are punished by the laws of nature. But when a devotee very sincerely wants to render service to the Lord, the Lord dictates in a different way. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 10.10, Tesham Satatijuktanam Bhajatam priti purvakam dedami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayanti te. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Everyone is actually a servant, not an enemy or friend, and everyone is working under different directions from the Lord, who directs every living entity according to his mentality. Text 13. <clears throat> Persons who always think in terms of enemy and friend 
are unable to ascertain the Supersoul within themselves. Not to speak of them, even such exalted persons as Lord Brahma, who are, or fully, who are fully conversant with the Vedic literature, are sometimes bewildered in following the principles of devotional service. The same Supreme Personality of Godhead who has created this situation has certainly given me the intelligence to take the side of your so-called enemy. Purport Prahlad Maharaj admitted frankly, My dear teachers, you wrongly think that Lord Vishnu is your enemy, but because he is favorable toward me, I understand that he is the friend of everyone. You may think that I have taken the side of your enemy, but factually, he has bestowed a great favor upon me. Text 14 <clears throat> O Brahmanas, teachers, as iron attracted by a mag magnetic stone moves automatically toward the magnet, my consciousness, having been changed by his will, is attracted by Lord Vishnu, who carries a disc in his hand. Thus, I have no independence. Purport For iron to be attracted by a magnet is natural. Similarly, for all living entities to be attracted toward Krishna is natural. And therefore the Lord's real name is Krishna, meaning he who attracts everyone and everything. The typical examples of such attraction are found in Vrindavan, where everything and everyone is attracted by Krishna. The elderly persons like Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Devi, the friends like Sridhama, Sudama, and the other cowherd boys, the gopis like Srimati Radharani and her associates, and even the birds, beasts, cows, and calves are attracted. The flowers and fruits in the gardens are attracted. The waves of the Yamuna are attracted and the land, sky, trees, plants, animals, and all other living beings are attracted by Krishna. This is the natural situation of everything in Vrindavan. Just contrary to the affairs of Vrindavan is the material world, where no one is attracted by Krishna, and everyone is attracted by Maya. This is the difference between the spiritual and the material worlds. Hiranyakashipu, who, who was in the material world, was attracted by women and money, whereas Prahlad Maharaj, being in his natural position, was attracted by Krishna. In replying to Hiranyakashipu's question about why Prahlad Maharaj had a deviant view, Prahlad said that his view was not deviant, but the natural position for everyone is to be attracted by Krishna. Hiranyakashipu found this view deviant, Prahlad said, because of being unnaturally unattracted by Krishna. Hiranyakashipu therefore needed purification. As soon as one is purified of material contamination, he is again attracted by Krishna. Sarvopadi vinir muktam tatparatvena nirmalam. In the material world, everyone is contaminated by the dirt of sense gratification and is acting according to different designations, sometimes as a human being, sometimes a beast, sometimes a demigod or, or tree, and so on. One must be cleansed of all these designations. Then one will naturally, then, then one will be naturally attracted to Krishna. The bhakti process purifies the living entity of all unnatural attractions. When one is purified, he is attracted by Krishna and begins to serve Krishna instead of serving Maya. This is his natural position. A devotee is attracted by Krishna whereas a non-devotee being contaminated by the dirt of material enjoyment is not. This is confirmed by the Lord in Bhagavad Gita 7.28 Yesham Twan Tagatam Papam Jananam Punya Karmanam Te Dvandva Mohanir Mukta Vajantimam Dridavrataha. Persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, whose sinful actions are completely eradicated and who are freed from the duality of delusion 
engage themselves in my service with determination. One must be freed from all the sinful dirt of material existence. Everyone in this material world is contaminated by material <coughs> desire. Everyone in this material world is contaminated by material desire. Unless one is free from all material desire, anya bilashita shunyam, one cannot be attracted by Krishna. Text 15. <clears throat> the great Saint Narada continued, The great soul Prahlad Maharaj became silent after saying this to his teachers, Chanda and Amarka, the seminal sons of Shukracharya. These so-called brahmanas then became angry at him. Because they were servants of Hiranyakashipu, they were very sorry, and to chastise Prahlad Maharaj, they spoke as follows. Purport. The word Shukra means semen. The sons of Shukracharya were brahmanas by birthright, but an actual brahmana is one who possesses the brahminical qualities. The brahmanas, Shanda and Amarka, being seminal sons of Shukracharya, did not actually possess real brahminical qualifications, for they engaged as servants of Hiranyakashipu. An actual brahmana is very much satisfied to see every, anyone, not to speak of his disciple, become a devotee of Lord Krishna. Such brahmanas are meant to satisfy the Supreme Master. A brahmana is strictly prohibited from becoming a servant of anyone else, for that is the business of dogs and shudras. A dog must satisfy his master, but a brahmana does not have to satisfy anyone. He, simply, he is simply meant to satisfy Krishna. Anukulyena, Krishnanu, Shilinam. That is the real qualification of a brahmana. Because Shanda and Amarka were seminal brahmanas and had become servants of such a master as Hiranyakashipu, they unnecessarily wanted to chastise Prahlad Maharaj. Text 16 Oh, please bring me a stick. This Prahlad is damaging our name and fame. Because of his bad intelligence, he has become like a cinder in the dynasty of the demons. Now he needs to be treated like by the fourth of the four kinds of political diplomacy. True teachers of political diplomacy. Acharyas. Purport. In political affairs, when a person disobediently agitates against the government, four principles are used to suppress him. Legal orders, pacification, the offer of a post, or finally, weapons. When there are no other arguments, he is punished. In logic, this is called argumentum ad baculum. When the two seminal brahmanas, Shanda and Amarka, failed to extract from Prahlad Maharaj the cause for his having opinions different from those of his father, they called for a stick with which to chastise him to satisfy their master, Hiranyakashipu. Because Prahlad had become a devotee, they considered him to be contaminated by bad intelligence and to be the worst descendant in the family of demons. It is said, where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. In a society or family in which everyone is a demon, for someone to become a Vaishnava is certainly folly. Thus, Prahlad Maharaj was charged with bad intelligence because he was among demons, including his teachers, who were supposedly brahmanas. The members of our Christian consciousness movement are in a position similar to that of Prahlad Maharaj. All over the world, 99% of the people are godless demons and therefore our preaching of Krishna consciousness following in the footsteps of Prahlad Maharaj is always hampered by many impediments. Because of their fault of being devotees, the American boys who have sacrificed everything for preaching Krishna consciousness are charged with being members of the CIA. 
<laughs> well, they, they won't judge like that now, but they would then in India <laughs> in the beginning. Moreover, the seminal Brahmanas in India who say that one can become a Brahmana only if, sorry, Moreover, the seminal Brahman is in India who say that one can become a Brahman only if born in a Brahmana family charge us with ruining the Hindu system of, of religion. Of course, the fact is that one becomes a Brahmana by qualification because we are training Europeans and Americans to become qualified and are awarding them Brahminical status we are being charged with destroying the Hindu religion. Nonetheless, confronting all kinds of difficulties, we must spread the Christian consciousness movement with great determination, like that of Prahlad Maharaj. In spite of being the son of the demon Hiranyakashipu, Prahlad never feared the chastisements of the seminal Brahmanas, sons of a demoniac father. Text 17 <coughs> This rascal Prahlad has appeared like a thorn tree in a forest of sandalwood. <laughs> to cut down sandalwood trees, an axe is needed, and the wood of the thorn tree is very suitable for the handle of such an axe. Lord Vishnu is the axe for cutting down the sandalwood forest of the family of demons, and this Prahlad is the handle for that axe. Purport. Thorn trees generally grow in deserted places, not in sandalwood forests. But the seminal Brahmanas, Shanda and Amarka, compared the dynasty of the Daitya Hiranyakashipu to a sandalwood forest and compared Prahlad Maharaj to a hard, strong thorn tree that could provide the handle of an axe. They compared Lord Vishnu to the axe itself. An axe alone cannot cut a thorn tree. It needs a handle, which may be made of the wood of a thorn tree. Thus the thorn tree of a demoniac civilization can be cut to pieces by the axe of Vishnu Bhakti, devotional service to Lord Krishna. Some of the members of the demoniac civilization, like Prahlad Maharaj, may become the handle for the axe to assist Lord Vishnu and thus the entire forest of demoniac civilization can be cut to pieces. Shanda and Amarka, the teachers of Prahlad Maharaj, chastised and threatened their disciple in various ways and began teaching him about the paths of religion, economic development and sense gratification. This is the way they educated him. Purport. In this verse, the words paradam, grahayam, asha are important. The words grahayam, asa literally mean that they tried to induce Prahlad Maharaj to accept the paths of dharma, artha and kama, religion, economic development and sense gratification. People are generally preoccupied with these three concerns without interest in the path of liberation. Hiranyakashipu, the father of Pulad Maharaj, was simply interested in gold and sense enjoyment. The word Hiranya means gold, and Kashipu refers to soft cushions and bedding on which people enjoy sense gratification. The word Pralad, however, refers to one who was always joyful in understanding Brahman. Brahmabhuta Prasanatma. Pralad means Prasenatma, always joyful. Prahlad, Prahlad was always joyful in worshipping the Lord, but in accordance with the instructions of Hiranyakashipu, the teachers were in, interested in teaching him about material things. Materialistic persons think that the path of religion is meant for improving their material conditions. The materialist goes to a temple to worship many varieties of demigods just to receive some benediction to improve, improve his material life. He goes to a sadhu or so-called swami to take advantage of an easy method for achieving material opulence. 
in the name of religion, the so-called sadhus try to satisfy the senses of the materialists by showing them shortcuts to material opulence. Sometimes they give some talisman or blessing. Sometimes they attract materialistic persons by producing gold. Then they declare themselves God. And foolish materialists are attracted to them for economic development. As a result of this process of cheating, others are reluctant to accept the religious process. And instead, they advise people in general to work for material advancement. This is going on all over the world. Not only now, but since time immemorial, no one is interested in moksha, liberation. There are four principles, dharma, religion, artha, economic development, kama, sense gratification, and moksha, liberation. People accept religion to become materially opulent. And why should one be materially opulent? For sense gratification. Thus people prefer these three margas, the three, the three paths of materialistic life. No one is interested in liberation and Bhagavad Bhakti, devotional service to the Lord, is above even liberation. Therefore the process of devotional service, Krishna consciousness, is extremely difficult to understand. This will be explained later by Prahlad Maharaj. The teachers, Shanda and Amarka, tried to induce Prahlad Maharaj to accept the materialistic way of life, but actually their attempt was a failure. Text 19. After some time, the teachers, Shanda and Amarka, thought that Prahlad Maharaj was sufficiently educated in the diplomatic affairs of pacifying public leaders appeasing them by giving them lucrative posts, dividing and ruling over them, and punishing them in cases of disobedience. Then one day, after Prahlad's mother had personally washed the boy and dressed him nicely with sufficient ornaments, they presented him before his father. Purport. It is essential for a student who is going to be a ruler or king to learn the four diplomatic principles. There is always rivalry between a king and his citizens. Therefore, when a citizen agitates the public against the king, the duty of the king is to call him and try to pacify him with sweet words, saying, you are very important in the state. Why should you disturb the public with some new cause for agitation? If the citizen is not pacified, the king should then offer him some lucrative post. Hare Krishna as a governor or minister, any post that draws a high salary so that he may be agreeable. If the enemy still goes on agitating the public, the king should try to create dissension in the enemy's camp. But if he still continues, the king should employ argumentum ad baculum, severe punishment, by putting him in a jail or placing him before a firing squad. The teachers appointed by Hiranyakashipu taught Prahlad Maharaj how to be a diplomat so that he could rule over the citizens very nicely. Text 20 When Hiranyakashipu saw that his child had fallen at his feet and was offering obeisances as an affectionate father, he immediately began showering blessings upon the child and embraced him with both arms. A father naturally feels happy to embrace his son, and Hiranyakashipu became very happy in this way. 21. Narada Muni continued, My dear King Yudhishthir, Hiranyakashipu seated Prahlad Maharaj in his lap and began smelling his head with great affection with affectionate tears gliding down from his eyes and moistening the child's smiling face, he spoke to his son as follows. Purport If a child or disciple falls at the feet of the father or spiritual master, the superior responds by smelling the head of the subordinate. 
22. Hiranyakashipu said, My dear Pallad, my dear son, O long-lived one, for so much time you have heard many things from your teachers. Now please, repeat to me whatever you think is the best of that knowledge. Purport. In this verse, Hiranyakashipu inquires from his son what he has learned from his guru. Prahlad Maharaja's gurus were of two kinds, Shanda and Amarka, the sons of Shukracharya in the seminal disciplic succession. Whoops. In this verse, Hiranyakashipu inquires from his son what he had learned from his guru. <coughs> Prahlad Maharaja's gurus, gurus were of two kinds, oh, Shanda and Amarka the sons of Shukracharya, in the seminal disciplic succession, where the guru was appointed by his father. But his other guru was the exalted Narda Muni, who had instructed Prahlad when Prahlad was within the womb of his mother. Prahlad Maharaj responded to the inquiry of his father with the instructions he had received from his spiritual master, Narda Muni. Thus, there was again a difference of opinion, because Prahlad Maharaj wanted to relate the best thing he had learned from his spiritual master, whereas Hiranyakashipu accepted, expected to hear about the politics and diplomacy Prahlad had heard from Shanda and Amarka. Now the dissension between the father and son became increasingly intense as Prahlad Maharaj began to say what he had learned from his guru Narda Muni. Famous b Verses Sri Paradu Vacha, Shavanam Kirtanam Vishno, Smaranam Padasevanam, Archanam Vandanam, Dasyam Sakyam Atmanivedanam, Itipung Sharpita Vishnau, Bhaktis Chenda Balakshana, Kriyeta Bhagavat Yada, Tanmanye Ditam Utamam. Prahlad Maharaj said, Hearing and chanting, about the transcendental holy name, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with sixteen types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming a servant, considering the Lord one's best friend, and surrendering everything unto Him, in other words, serving Him with the body, mind, and words. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood as to be the most learned person for he has acquired complete knowledge. Now we're going to have a few page purport here before we hear the reaction of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> here Pra Prabhupada, this is one of the longest purports, is going to explain each one of the items of devotional service in depth. So we'll get through as much as we can until 7.30. Purport When Pallad Maharaj was asked by his father to say something from whatever he had learned, he considered that what he had learned from his spiritual master was the best of all teachings. Whereas what he had learned about diplomacy from his material teachers Shanda and Amarka was useless. Bhakti Parisha Nubavo Virakti Anyatra Cha Bhagavatam 11.242 This is the symptom of pure devotional service. A pure devotee is interested only in devotional service, not in material affairs. To execute devotional service, one should always engage in hearing and chanting about Krishna or Lord Vishnu. The process of temple worship is called archana. How to perform archana will be explained herein. One should have complete faith in the words of Krishna, who says that he is the great well-wishing friend of everyone. Suridam Sarvabhutanam A devotee considers Krishna the only friend. This is called Sakyam. Pungsar Pita Vishnau. The word Pungsa 
means by all living entities. There are no distinctions permitting only a man or only a brahmana to offer devotional service to the Lord. Everyone can do so. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 9.32, Striyo Vaishyas Tata Shudras Tipiyanti Padam Gatim Although women Vaishyas and Shudras are considered less intelligent, they also can become devotees and return home back to Godhead. After performing sacrifices, sometimes a person engaged in fruitive activity customarily offers the result to Vishnu. But here it is said, Bhagavad Jidha, one must directly offer everything to Vishnu. This is called sannyas, not merely nyas. A tridandi sannyasi carries three dandas, signifying kaya, mano, vakya, body, mind, and words. All of these should be offered to Vishnu, and then one can begin devotional service. Fruity workers first perform some pious activities and then formally or officially offer the results to Vishnu. The real devotee, however, first offers his surrender to Krishna with his body, mind and words and then uses his body, mind and words for the service of Krishna as Krishna desires. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives the following explanation in his Tatya. The word Shavana refers to giving oral reception to the holy name and descriptions of the Lord's form, qualities, entourage and pastimes as explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and similar authorized scriptures. After orally receiving such messages, one should memorize these vibrations and repeat them, kirtanam. Smaranam means trying to understand more and more about the Supreme Lord. And Padasevanam means engaging oneself in serving the lotus feet of the Lord according to the time and circumstances. Archanam means worshipping Lord Vishnu as one does in the temple. And Bandanam means offering respectful obeisances. Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru Bandanam means namaskuru, offering obeisances or offering prayers. Thinking oneself to be Nitya Krishna Das, everlasting, everlastingly a servant of Krishna, is called Dasyam, and Sakyam means being a well wisher of Krishna. Krishna wants everyone to surrender unto him because everyone is constitutionally his servant. Therefore, as a sincere friend of Krishna, one should preach this philosophy, requesting everyone to surrender unto Krishna. Atmanivedanam means offering Krishna everything, including one's body, mind, intelligence, and whatever one may possess. One's sincere endeavor to perform these nine processes of devotional service is technically called bhakti. The word adha means directly. One should not be like the karmis who perform pious activities and then formally offer the results to Krishna. This is called karmakanda. One should not aspire for the results of his pious activities but should dedicate one's, him, oneself fully and then act piously. In other words, one should act for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu, not for the satisfaction of his own senses. That is the meaning of the word adha, directly. Anyabhilashitashunyam jnana-karmadhyanavritam anakulyina-krishnanu shilanam bhakti-uttama One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. One should simply satisfy Krishna without being influenced by fruitive knowledge or fruitive activity. The Gopal Tapani Upanishad says that the word bhakti means engagement in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, 
not of anyone else. This Upanishad describes that bhakti is the offering of devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. To perform devotional service, one should be relieved of the bodily conception of life and, and, asp and aspirations to be happy through elevation to the higher planetary systems. In other words, work performed simply for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord without any desire for material benefits is called bhakti. Bhakti is also called nishkarma or freedom from the results of fruitive activity. Bhakti and nishkarma are on the same platform although devotional service and fruitive activity appear almost the same. The nine different processes enunciated by Prahlad Maharaj who learned them from Narada Muni may not all be required for the execution of devotional service. If a devotee performs only one of these nine without deviation, he can attain the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes it is found that when one performs one of the processes, other processes are mixed with it. That is not improper for a devotee. When a devotee executes any one of the nine processes, Navalakshana, this is sufficient. The other eight processes are included. Now let us discuss these nine different processes. Now I'm, I will stop here. And tomorrow we will start to hear one by one a very deep analysis of every... Pro, hold it. Pro, hold it. What? Oh. oh, it wasn't the mic, it was just a cover. But you suck at your hand, I mean, you have a question? Oh, come on. I was like, I was starting to vibrate. <laughs> come on, we'll f speak finally. Yeah, anyway, think about it in one day in the future. Quick, quick, quick. We're, we're, we're missing some nectar here. We're missing some nectar. Tamal Gopal is going to ask a question. Hare is, Krishna, Tamal. Is JNBJ Hiranyakashipur? So, is Hiranyakashipur JNBJ's incarnation? Like before JNBJ or after JNBJ? Hiranyakashipur and Hiranyaksha are J and VJ. The souls are the same, but the bodies of Vijay and Vijay. Wait, I mean Jagai and Madai. Oops. To ask Oops. And Madai, okay. But he asked J and Vijay. Okay, I got gotcha. you. This is a very important question you asked. I, 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 exp I thought that you wanted to say something more deep. <laughs> So now it's revealed the deep depth of your question. His question actually is, Jagai and Madai, are they Jai and Vijay? So here's the answer. Yes. Now let's say why. Okay? You see, Jai and Vijay, they made a mistake. They didn't allow the four Kumaras into Vaikuntha. And the four Kumaras said, Th these people don't belong in Vaikuntha, you know, stopping us. Who are we? Five-year-old boys, you know, naked, walk, running around the universe, you know, the great liberated souls. Has anybody stopped you from any going anywhere? I don't think so. Well, you're eight now. You're getting to the point where maybe someone may, but generally when you're five, you can go anywhere. <laughs> so then... The four Kumaras cursed Jai and Vijay. And when Vishnu was inside his palace and he understood what was going on and he came out just to give the four Kumaras his darsha and to approve of the curse. And as a result of that, Jai and Vijay had to come to the material world for three births, right? In order to remove the curse. Yeah. 
So the first were Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. And they were killed by Krishna in the form of Varaha, the boar, and Nershingadev, half man, half lion. We're going to hear about that pretty soon. Right? So then, because Krishna killed them, but not Krishna, the original form of Krishna, one of his incarnations, they became liberated and eligible to, de- to get a higher birth. So then, they took birth as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. And Lord Ramachandra came. Krishna in the form of Lord Ramachandra came and killed them. And because Lord Ramachandra is a little more merciful than the other incarnations, they got an opportunity to be killed by Krishna, personally. So then they took birth as Shishupal (coughs) and Dantavakra. And Krishna killed them. That made them eligible to go back to Vaikuntha. But when Lord Chaitanya came, Lord Chaitanya gives prema. You know, Krishna, when he kills the demons, they can go to Vaikuntha. But when Lord Chaitanya comes, he gives Krishna prema to everybody. So therefore, Jaini and, and Jaini Vijaya, they came back a fourth time to get Krishna prema from Lord Chaitanya, and they didn't even need to be killed. Because Lord Chaitanya, he doesn't kill. He, ge- he kills the demonic mentality. He purifies the heart and the soul and gives love of God free. So they came to get Krishna Prema. Now this brings up an interesting point, doesn't it? I thought so. That point is, you know, Lord Chaitanya <coughs> in Goloka Vrindavan, there's a special place called Shweta Dweep. And in Shweta Dweep, Lord Chaitanya has his eternal pastimes that go on. And the devotees in Lord Krishna Leela, they take another form to be with Lord Chaitanya. Therefore, Jigai and Madai got an, uh, an opportunity to be with Lord Chaitanya at the same time as Vishnu. This is the confidential I- meaning. You're such a good student. Mm-hmm. So, Maharaj, the three incarnations were like just for the liberation of Jaya and Vijay and then sending them back to Vaikuntha. But the fourth incarnation in the form of Jagai and Madai, that was to give them opportunity to get love, Krishna Prema. Yes. But the souls were same, so this was the fourth incarnation in Kali yes. Yuga. Yes, exactly. Okay. But those but they got eternal uh, forms to be with Lord Chaitanya eternally in his pastimes in Goloka Vrindavan. And those pastimes are going on at the same time, Vaikuntha. So now they're still do- doorkeepers in Vaikuntha, okay. and now they get to be with Lord Chaitanya in his Leela in Goloka Vrindavan. They were elevated. Huh? Yeah. And you know, it's it's like yeah, they didn't actually, yeah, and it's a, it's a very special pastime because, you know, they were killed by incarnations of Krishna, therefore they're eligible for liberation, but it wasn't really liberation. They were just, they just got put on hold until the next time, right? And then they came in like that. They didn't go into the Brahma Jyoti and become eternally liberated in the Brahma Jyoti or something like that. It was all Krishna's pastime. Yes, Pranahari. Wow. 
that means Amber Alert, Amber Alert, Amber Alert, somebody was stolen. There's no, there's no uh, rain, so it must be an Amber Alert, right? Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm appreciating this section, <coughs> how uh, <coughs> we read this verse in the Ishopanishad today, text 9, Andam Tama Parishanti, mm. how uh, the culture of, the one who cultivates the culture of nescience um, goes into the darkest regions of ignorance but one who cultivates the culture of so-called knowledge goes even lower into a deeper darker place um and Prabhupada's purport and Ishapanishad was all about how people who just commit sinful activities of you know engage in sense gratification are um you know their destination is not so bright but those who propagate that same sort of sinful activity and sense gratification, but under the guise of um, knowledge and under the guise of enlightenment, are uh, even greater offenders, even bigger cheaters, and even uh, a greater reaction is given to them by material nature. And so I was just thinking, it brought to my mind how Shunda and Amarka are this teaching of the material yeah. knowledge as, as education is kind of like that it's like the so-called knowledge and uh yeah how oh, that's just so prevalent in modern day it's something like that but even worse is the persons who teach spiritual knowledge in the form of mayavad philosophy that's the the pinnacle that's the the lowest of the low in, in according to ishapanishad and Prabhupada uses the example of buddhism versus uh, Mayavad. Because, you know, Buddha came, Krishna came as Buddha to stop the misuse of Vedic instructions and sacrifice to just rampantly kill animals without discrimination. And he came to stop that because it's so, so sinful, you know. And uh, so in doing that, he had to stop the faith in the Vedas, which is very difficult to do because uh, the Vedas are so deeply entrenched in, in Indian culture, philosophy. So only Krishna can do that, you know. So he did that, but then that wasn't the end of it. Then he came as Shankaracharya, and he taught because, you know, Buddha said, "Okay, I don't, I don't. This Vedic thing is no good. I'll teach you a process that you can do just by yourself without Vedic knowledge." without the Vedic culture, just by meditating yourself. And what's the, what's the goal? Atheism. Shunyavad. Yeah. Shunyavad. Void. So then, Krishna told, Shankara, told Lord Shiva to come as a form of a Brahmana, Shankaracharya, to teach covered Buddhism. Lord Chaitanya called it covered Buddhism. And Prabhupada said that the Buddhists are actually therefore more honest. Because they come right out and say there is no God. But the Mayavadi say, yes, there's God, but he's not a, doesn't have a person, does not a form. That's worse. So the Buddhists have a destination of impersonal it's a dark impersonal goal. They go into uh, the the pla some place in between the uh, in the coverings of the universe in the non -man unmanifested covering of the universe where there's no form. They just go into and it's just and it's really dark. You remember when Krishna took Arjuna to Vaikuntha? They went they went past through this area that was very very dark. You know. And then Shurasan Chakra had to come and light the way, you know, so the horses could see where they went, where they were going. That's the place where the Buddhists go. Whereas the Mayavadi, the, the, the not the Mayavadi, but the Brahmavadis, they go to the Brahmajyoti, which is all light. It's an, it's an, it's liberation of light, 
but there's no forms, there's no activities, there's no loving service to Krishna. So therefore, they can't taste the the the, the bliss of loving relationships. So that that's the the, the even even more deep, uh, you know, understanding of how knowledge takes you one plane. Supposed knowledge takes you even worse. Yes. I just have another one, a different reflection. Please. I really like this uh, where Prabhupada says, uh, yeah, it's in this purport to 23 and 24 about uh, Sakyam. How Sakyam means being a well wisher of Krishna. Mm. And uh, Krishna wants everyone to surrender unto him because everyone is constitutionally his servant. Therefore, as a sincere friend of Krishna, one should preach this philosophy, requesting everyone to surrender unto Krishna. Mm. I really like that definition of Sakyam is mm. being Krishna's friend means preaching. This is a result of being in Govardhan for years. Vaisheshika Prabhu and I have been doing this, what we're doing now, every year in Kartik, 70 years, five hours a day. We do just what we do in here five hours we do an hour and a half and then we have s reflections and then we do another an hour and do reflections and then we have lunch then we do another and, and do reflection and another like that <laughs> practice makes perfect anyway last Kartik we we read out loud the whole uh, fifth, fifth sixth. sixth and seventh cantos in, in one month. And by the end, we were sitting, you know, we were thinking. On the year before that, we were, Vaishnava Vaishn Prabhu and I were thinking, if we can do the third canto all the way through, then we'll be doing really good, because that's two volumes, the third canto is a lot. And we were thinking, if we can get through that in one month, that's really big. You know what happened? We did the whole fourth canto as well. Four volumes of the Bible, big, thick volumes in one month. And at the end, we were saying, this is impossible. Because it's just, we, but we just kept going on. And it's like, it was almost as if Lord Brahma, you know, made the, the time get bigger, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Every once in a while, Vaish would p pick up the book and he'd go, just see, you know? Just see how thin that page is, and look at what we've been through. You know, every, everyone we would be all amazed. And at the end, we want right at the, right at the end, we weren't going to make it. So we had a couple of marathon days, and we did seven hours, and did two hundred pages in in two days straight. Four four hundred pages in, in two days. <laughs> And at the end, we were all sitting there, and we couldn't get up. <laughs> I'm serious. We were so bewildered. We were so ecstatic. You know, in Kartik, in Govardhan, five hours a day for a whole month, and doing two full Bhagavata, two full cantos of Bhagavata. And and we were reading it like we're not going rrr, 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 just fast, 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 so we can get through it. It was we were reading. You know, I read a little bit slower than he does, but we we witness. This is the nectar. Now tomorrow we'll hear about the shravanam first and how shravanam is most important and how all the other uh, services rest on shravanam. Because without shravanam you can't know anything to do in devotional service without hearing first. So it's most important. And once one gets it, then what's most important? Kirtanam, chanting. But without the shravanam, you can't get the kirtanam. What to speak of the smaranam. Okay. Uh, can I be excused? I have, I actually, actually, tomorrow, remind me, don't, don't let me forget. You know, one of the qualities of women is they have memory. So please don't let me forget. Uh, I, I got my first question 
not online, but through my computer. I got a very nice question asked by uh, um, Dial Nitai, you know, the, the husband of uh, Radhananda and, and disciple of Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And he asked a very nice question about an answer we gave before, and we will go further into this nectarian philosophy and land where we can all be together really at one in agreement right I thought so <laughs> confirmed okay Sarva you got anything I'm just saying all that things are wonderful and you're doing it I'm not doing very well but you're stunned you're, you're having ecstatic symptoms right in front of us so we can't we're not knowing it because it's all inside you're holding it back yeah. your ecstatic symptoms <laughs> no it's not no it's not you can't fool us you can't we can see you <laughs> all right Prahlad Maharaj ki jai Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo yeah.